Friends, Romans, and countrymen, lend me your ears. This is Megan, or McGeegan, as she likes to be called. She has been asking me for over six months to do a video on reports, and I've finally run out of excuses. Seriously, I've left the oven running 47 times, and she's just not buying it anymore. So here we are. Um, hmm. Reports. All right, I'll be honest. I haven't prepared anything yet. Guess I'll come back when I've done some prep work. Several bad puns later. All right, let's do this. All about reports. I'm Jeff, and this is Off the Charts with Jeff. Often, when someone says reporting, they are referring to either financial statements, you know, income statements, balance sheets, etc., quarterly reports for the board, where high-level information about the entire company is presented, and then stock goes up, or fairly large and detailed information that's historically got printed and archived. In Dundas BI, all of these are possible. And of course, just to make it a little bit confusing, I want to point out that some people just say reports for all things data. I'm talking dashboards, self-service, individual charts, embedded content, anything data might be called a report. But in the world of Dundas BI, reporting has a very particular meaning. Dundas BI offers a report designer that's different from the dashboard designer that allows you to build pretty much all the different types of reports that I mentioned before. I should probably also say that it comes at no additional cost, like many other tools out there that either don't offer this or charge a premium to get you to buy another product if you want reporting. If you own Dundas BI, you have the ability to do both dashboards and reports, and some additional options that I'm not even getting into today. The way reports work is that it's essentially acting like a repeater. You build a header, whatever you want in it, any size, any color, logos, whatever you want. When you build the body, the body is built once, and the designer is going to automatically repeat based on the data that you have in your data source. This will run as many times as it needs to and will easily span multiple pages. This is the big distinction between dashboards, which are usually only a single page, and reports, which can run multiple pages. Reports, of course, can be exportable into formats like PDF, which will also allow for multi-page printing if desired. The big difference between a report and a traditional dashboard is that the dashboard has a fixed layout and the content of the dashboard is typically fixed as well. The report can stretch and grow as needed. Now, as I mentioned, that fixed layout is still existing in a report in that the body is being repeated, so we're not dramatically changing the structure, but it will grow depending on the content that you want to throw at it, and that's the main difference. Even interactivity can exist within a report, just like it would with a dashboard. You're not going to lose anything here. All the functionality is there either way. It's really more of a layout thing. Now, another thing that a lot of people usually perceive when it comes to reports is that they're completely text-based. But that's not necessarily the case with Dundas BI. In Dundas BI, you can have any elements you want to have from the dashboard screen on a report. This can include images, charts, maps. Realistically, any data visualization you want to repeat can be used. Because of this, the potential for creating custom visualizations using the report designer is staggeringly large. You can even do interesting things like embedding dashboards in reports. You can also embed a report in a dashboard if you wanted to go the other way around to show some raw detail alongside some specific KPIs. It's kind of cool how even the dashboard that has a fixed size and layout can have an embedded report which is now scrollable to infinity and will allow them to show whatever content you need. Now, there is another neat idea along the lines of drilling users into specific information, and that's the idea of forcing users to choose their parameters before a report is ever loaded. The domain of a report can contain maybe a huge amount of things, and you might want to force your users to narrow down their selection a little bit before the entire thing is rendered. You might do something like this for performance reasons or simply to reduce some of the load on your data source. You know, do you want a user to load up 500 pages worth of content just to realize they don't care about it? Let them choose what they want to see first. This can be really helpful. So as you can see, there's a lot of cool stuff here. And 
As much as it pains me to say this, maybe McGigan was right about this. Reports are certainly worth talking about. There's actually a lot more here that I haven't covered, such as some of the funky layouts that can be allowed, such as sibling groups or child groups, when it comes to you controlling the structure of what you want to see. But I'd certainly say that some of these may be more advanced topics and maybe not something you need to worry about right away. So just be aware that there's a lot here and there's a lot of customization capability. So that's it. I hope this gives you a pretty good appreciation for what the report can do and why it's important. Business intelligence isn't just about dashboards, and there are different mediums for which you can present data. And if you do want to learn a little bit more about the subject, I do have a video comparing dashboards and reports, which might be interesting to you. Hope this helps, and thanks for watching.